Hi guys, Brad Griggs, talking to you on today's blog about an article, I'll post the link below, uh, about Brisbane City Council looking to institute what we'll call a halfway measure between an attack and a warning in their management of dogs. We have something similar here in Victoria, in Australia, and that's, that's menacing dog status. I actually applaud Br Brisbane City Council. They're looking to put something in place that fills a gap. And the reason that I applaud it is in line with um, anyone who knows me or this business, Canine Services, will tell you that um, we're passionate advocates for responsible canine guardianship. Part of that is as a dog's owner, you need to be responsible for its behavior. If your dog is a jerk on leash and it wants to kill other dogs, realistically, it makes that dog only marginally um, safer than a dog that is off leash that still wants to kill other dogs. You still have a problem, you're just restraining your dog. Okay, so I actually think that it's a wonderful thing that Brisbane City Council is calling for these powers. It's actually not too bad a model. Here in Victoria, a council can actually then look at the problem of the dog and uh, where they desire to, they can put that under a management plan and people can have that dealt with and then they can have that status removed. Now, I'm not saying that I like all dog laws in Victoria. Of course, there are a lot of laws here that are completely cockamamie and nonsensical, such as breed-specific legislation. And Victoria's dog laws are patently ineffective. We have statistics that show that since 2002, hospital admissions as a result of dog bite incidents has actually increased by about 50%. Yet strangely, the media didn't really choose to run with that story when we pitched it to them. And those statistics are actually very good. They're from the Victorian Injury Surveillance Unit out at Monash, also known as VSU. So I actually applaud any council in Australia that wants to follow the lead of Brisbane City Council in this regard. The only caveat that I would put around that, guys, is who's now going to enforce it? What type of training do they have? What type of understanding of the dogs do they have? Right? It's very, very important that they then don't take a half step forward to then take a full step back. Take a half step forward to then take a whole step forward and then take another step forward. So put this, um, in, this power in place to be able to enforce better laws and then truly empower the people that are enforcing them. Most animal management officers are awesome folks, but like all walks of life, you'll get people that run the gamut, okay? The bottom line is if we give them good policy and good laws, or good standard operating procedures to follow, we then need to empower them with good training to be able to follow that up. Brisbane City Council is, based on what I read in that article, simply looking to put forward a behavior-based assessment of an individual dog that holds an owner and, well, hopefully the owner more so than the dog to account. And that keeps the public safer and that's what we are all about. Dogs and public safety, dog welfare and public safety can go hand in hand. You can never completely remove or negate all risk because dogs are living, thinking, breathing individual beings. They are sentient beings, okay? They are created sui generis, which is Latin. It's a beautiful Latin term to say that dogs are, each dog is created completely individually, even where they're pedigree dogs or um, from what many people would call a purebred, and I hate that term, litter. So, Brisbane City Council, you've got our support. We think it's fantastic. If you want some training, please reach out to us. Media, pick this up and run with this. This is a really positive story, okay? But we need to then follow up and we need to say where to from here. How do we empower these awesome people that are making this very smart decision to understand what they are looking at and how do we put a really, really good review process in place so we can remove that uh, menacing dog type status when it's been effectively dealt with by the owner. So that's it for today. I'm Brad Griggs, Canine Services International. Keep your eyes out for more blog posts, guys, and um, stay safe, train hard.